name is Miss Deja and I work at the Mono Arts Council. Today we will be learning about the Asian brushstroke technique and get to know the artist Hokusai, who is from Japan. Let's first go over the supplies that we'll be needing today and then I'll give you an example of what we'll be creating. First, you're going to need this green paintbrush, it's about a size 8. You'll also need black paint, this is tempura. You will need a big white sheet of construction paper, this is 12 by 18. We'll be using this portrait and not landscape. So we'll be doing our painting portrait, hamburger and not hot dog, right? So portrait. We'll put this over to the side because first you're going to need a sheet of paper to practice the Asian brushstroke technique on. So you can use construction paper, paper towels, newspaper, um, cardboard, any sheet of paper you don't mind practicing this technique on first. Um, and you can also use line paper as well, but get a piece of scrap paper so that we can practice the Asian brushstroke technique on that. I'm going to show you special ways to hold your paintbrush in order to create these different effects because we will be painting pictures of bamboo today. So this is the painting here. We're going to create three stalks of bamboo. I'm going to show you a special way to hold your paintbrush to create each part of this plant because we want to express all of the characteristics of this amazing plant. So this is what we'll be creating today. I'm going to show you a little closer. What will we be creating? All right, so I'll go over the supplies once again at the very end of the slideshow, but let's first get to know Hokusai and the Asian brushstroke technique. As I mentioned, Hokusai is from Japan and he was born in 1760. So we're going to look at a slideshow, get to know him a little bit better, get to know his artwork, and get to know the Asian brushstroke technique. So this is Hokusai. He was born in 1760. He is a Japanese artist from Japan. This is a picture of him when he was much older. If you remember from the Frida Kahlo lesson, self-portraits are when artists paint or draw themselves. So this is a painting of Hokusai when he was much older. Hokusai went by 30 different names in his lifetime, but his favorite one was Hokusai, and that means Northern Star in Japanese. He also moved about a hundred times in his life. So that's a lot of packing and unpacking and trying to tell someone one of your 30 different names. And uh, that is a lot to remember. You might be wondering, why did Hokusai move so many times? Well, he moved often so that he could sell his work and because he loved to see all the different landscapes around Japan. Hokusai was a little bit younger than you all are when he first learned to paint. He was six years old when he received his first paintbrush and he started to paint on everything he could find. He'd paint on rocks, wood, um, paper, anything he could find, he was painting on it. But what he practiced painting the most was bamboo, which is what we're going to do today. We're gonna to practice the Asian brushstroke technique just like Hokusai did by starting to paint bamboo. He also would make his own paintbrushes. So he would actually make his paintbrushes out of mouse whiskers and bamboo. If any of you want to get creative and maybe use your cat or dog hair and some sticks that you find outside to make your own paintbrushes, please let me know how that comes out. So this is a teacher teaching students calligraphy. This is an example of how you can use the Asian brushstroke technique. Calligraphy is used in Asian culture to write the Asian alphabet. Uh, that alphabet consists of about 40,000 symbols. And for example, if you wanted to read a newspaper, you would need to learn at least 8,000 symbols just to read a newspaper. That's a lot to remember. <laughs> Luckily for our alphabet, we only have to learn about 26 symbols. Right. So this is just an example of the Asian brushstroke technique. This is Hokusai's most famous piece of work, The Great Wave at Kanegawa. You might recognize this from posters, tapestry, paintings. Um, I've seen this so many different places. Hokusai loved to paint the nature that he saw all around Japan. The rivers, the ocean, and Mount Fuji, all the mountains, but his favorite thing to paint was Mount Fuji. Um, I do have a question for you, and I'll give you a moment to think about it. Do you think that this is a painting or a drawing? 
For those who think that this is a drawing, you are correct. This is actually a drawing by Hokusai. This is another example of Asian artistry, especially during Hokusai's time, they would make their own stamps. And so what teachers would do is teach their students how to cut a piece of wood, make sure you have a flat surface, paint over that with white paint, and then draw on the wood with black paint, uh, the symbol or the shape that you wanted your stamp to look like. Then they would cut away the white areas and then paint black ink over the part that was still sticking away from the wood, that little symbol that they had, um, and then use that to stamp on papers. Luckily, we do not have to do this today. Just another example of Asian artwork. This is 36 Views of Mount Fuji. This is a part of Hokusai's book of artwork. This book is actually made of rice paper. And once again, lots of nature. You also see Mount Fuji in the back. And I wanna put your attention to the white space on the left part of this picture. That is known as negative space to artists and that is okay. So when we're making our paintings today, don't worry about filling up the whole paper. It's okay to leave that white space with a negative space. It actually adds to the pictures. This is another picture from that book. Lots of nature. We see Mount Fuji again in the back. And you can see a little bit on the top there, but it shows that this was made from rice paper. This is an example of a painting of bamboo. There's actually bamboo and rocks. The rocks are on the left. There's some calligraphy on the right. Bamboo is very special because it's so versatile. It can be used in so many different ways. And one of the beautiful characteristics of bamboo is that it can bend and flex under pressure or if there's any wind without breaking. So if any of you have skis or snowboards, you might recognize or know that sometimes the skis and snowboards are made from bamboo. And that is because of how strong the bamboo is and it can bend and flex without breaking. Um, so we're gonna express those characteristics in our painting. The leaves are also very graceful. We're gonna paint the leaves in a special way um, to express the characteristics of the leaves as well. Bamboo can also be used in a variety of ways. Um, in Asian culture, they use it to build houses, to make furniture. They also use it in food. So if you've had ramen before, you are sometimes given the option to put bamboo shoots in your ramen. Such a versatile plant. And we're gonna express how versatile it is and all the characteristics in our painting. This is a close up of the painting of the bamboo and rocks. Notice how there's different parts of the plant. We're gonna stop every time we paint a different part of this plant. We're gonna express the stalk of the bamboo, the branches and the leaves in special ways. This is a step-by-step, step-by-step um, step pictures of how to paint bamboo. We're gonna start with the stalk, paint the branches, paint the leaves, and then end with shading in the inside of the bamboo. And we're gonna learn special techniques to do that, do each step. This is an emperor's scroll. Calligraphy is used by artists to not only write their signature on their artwork, but also the Calligraphy will sometimes include their birth date, their place of birth, a special occasion, maybe the location that they're in. So think about that when you're creating your paintings today. Maybe you want to include some fun facts about where you're at or where you are from in your signature. This is an example of uh, the variety of paintbrushes that artists will use. Uh, paintbrushes are typically made from animal hair and like wolf and goat, and the handles are made from bamboo. They come in all different shapes and sizes and are used for different techniques. Um, there's also an example of stamps there at the bottom of the hanging brushes. Unfortunately, our paintbrush is not that exciting. It's only made out of plastic and synthetic bristles, but I wanted to show you an example of all of the different tools that artists will use. Hokusai was 89 years old when he died. He was actually painting until his very last breath. On his gravestone, it says, old man crazy about art. <laughs> all right, so let's get to know Hokusai and the Asian brushstroke technique a little bit better by creating our own paintings just like Hokusai. Let's go over the art supplies once again. You'll need a paintbrush, size eight, 
black paint. I'll be using tempura. This is also water-based, so it's a little easier to use and to clean up. You'll also need the big white sheet of construction paper, 12 by 18, white construction paper. We're really using it portrait, not landscape. So portrait, put that over to the side because first we are gonna practice the Asian brush stroke technique on a sheet of scrap paper. So make sure you have a sheet of paper, lined paper, construction paper, newspaper, cardboard, anything you don't mind practicing this technique on first. And then we'll be using the big white sheet of construction paper a little later. You might be wondering, what about water? We will be using water, but at the end of the lesson. Let's practice the Asian brush stroke technique. So we're first gonna start by creating these really thin lines. In order to do that, you're going to need your paintbrush, your paint, and remember we're using that sheet of scrap paper to practice on. To hold the paintbrush in the first technique, you wanna place your palm to the sky, to the roof, put your handle of your paintbrush in the palm of your hand. Right. So the paintbrush, the handle here should be in the palm of your hand. You're going to hold the end of the paintbrush right before you touch the bristles between your index finger and your thumb. And then you can use the other three fingers to hold the paintbrush so it gives you really good control over the brush. Um, another way to hold the, the brush is to put your hand like an, like an okay sign and place your paintbrush between your index finger and your thumb. Remember, we are not holding it like a pen or a pencil. So we're not holding it like a pen or a pencil. You're gonna turn your brush around and make sure that the handle is near the palm of your hand and you're holding the, bris the handle close to the bristles, right at the bottom of that gold part. Okay, just so you have good control. If you're left-handed, palm will go straight to the sky. Place your handle in the palm of your hand. So the bristle should be near your thumb. And then grab the paintbrush with your thumb and your index finger. And then you could use your back fingers to hold the paintbrush in place. Same thing, make that okay sign and put your paintbrush, the bottom of the handle, right before you touch the bristles right between your index finger and your thumb. That'll give you good control. Okay, another thing I do too to make sure the brush stays steady is I wrap my pinky finger right underneath the handle, right? So I put the handle between my ring finger and my pinky to make sure I have good control. Right, so for the first technique, watch me first, and then you can go ahead and practice yourself. We're gonna dip just the very, very tip of the bristles into the paint. So all you need is a little bit of paint on the very bottom part of the, the bristles. You don't need too much paint. You're gonna lightly touch the paper with the tip of your bristles, and then glide your hand across to make these really thin lines. Every time you make a new line, you wanna grab a little bit more paint and then lightly touch the paper. If you feel like your lines are coming out too thick, maybe lift your hand up just a little and try using less paint. Go ahead and start practicing when you're ready. So make sure you have your paintbrush holding it like this. You wanna make sure you have it, the handle in the palm of your hand and you're holding it at the bottom of the handle just before you touch the bristles. Dip the tip of your bristles in the paint and lightly touch the paper to make these lines. Every time you make a new line, you wanna grab a little bit more paint. Remember, you don't need too much paint. We just need a little bit on the very, very tip of the bristles, not too much. You think your lines are too thick, lift your hand up just a little bit and try using less paint. Remember, we're just lightly touching the paper. Here's mine a little bit closer, for example. Make sure to just have fun and try your best. Remember, you're learning a whole new technique. So I'll give you a moment to make a couple more lines and then we'll move on to our next technique. We will be using this to make the bamboo stalk and our branches. And I will be going over this technique again a little bit later. 
So let's go into the leaves now. For the leaves, make sure you're holding the paintbrush, just like a pen or a pencil. You wanna hold it right in the middle of the handle, about where the grip is if you're using this exact paintbrush. Just like a pen or a pencil. If you're left-handed, it will look like this. So just like a pen or a pencil, holding the paintbrush in the middle of the handle. Okay, so for the leaves, make sure to watch me first. I'll let you know when to get started yourself. We're gonna, again, dip the tip of the bristles into the paint. You don't need too much paint, just the very, very tip here. This time, we're gonna wipe off any extra paint on the edge of the container. And I like to get all sides of the bristle. So I'm gonna twist the handle between my fingers to make sure I'm getting all sides. You also wanna make sure that your paintbrush comes to that nice point. Touch the paper with the tip of your bristles. Press down, flick. Press down, flick. Press down, flick. And so you're brushing the brush along the paper or sweeping your brush along the paper. I make about three leaves before I get a little bit more paint, making sure you're still holding it in the middle of the handle, wiping off any extra paint, making sure the brush comes to a nice point. Touch the paper with the tip of the bristle, press down, flick, press down, flick, press down, flick. We're brushing the brush towards ourselves. Go ahead and start practicing yourself. Just make sure you're holding it in the middle of the handle dipping only the tip of the bristles into the paint. So just the very bottom here. Remember, we're wiping off any extra paint on the edge of the container. Getting all sides of the bristles, making sure that the bristles come to a really nice point. Touch the paper with the tip of the bristles, press down, flick. We do that about three times for each set of leaves. It's okay if some of them come out a little bit darker or lighter than others, that adds to your painting. So practice making the sets of leaves a few times. And then once we are ready, we will start our actual painting on that big sheet of paper. Remember, we're still just practicing right now. Kind of looks like chicken feet or dinosaur tracks. And that's okay. Remember to try your best. That'll be more than good enough. A little bit closer for reference. That's how my leaves are looking. So practice making a couple more leaves and then we're gonna move on to our painting. Making sure you're not using any water, only the paint right now. We'll be using water at the end of the lesson. If you feel like your bristles are a little too hard, put your bristles in a cup of water, move them around to soften up the bristles, make sure you dab it dry before you use it in your painting. So I think we're ready for the next step. Go ahead and take your practice paper and move it to the side. Now we're going to use the big white sheet of construction paper, 12 by 18. Make sure you're using it land, portrait and not landscape. We are still going to need that green paintbrush or size eight paintbrush and your black paint. For in another example, let's go back to what I showed you earlier. We're going to create three stalks of bamboo, making sure you're leaving space between each shoot. You also want to leave some space between the branches as well. So let's start making our painting. Make sure you leave some space for each stalk. Yours do not have to look like mine. You can make them bigger or smaller, going in any direction that you would like. It does not have to go up to the top of the paper. So let's get started. We're going to go back to that first technique, putting your palm up to the sky placing your handle in your palm and holding the brush between your thumb and your index finger. Right, so we get good control over our paint brush. We're gonna dip just the tip of the bristles into the paint. Remember, we only need a little bit on the bottom there. And we're gonna start making the bamboo stalks going all the way up or up the paper. You don't have to go all the way up if you don't want to. And to make the stalks, all you're making are these little rectangles going all the way up the paper. And I want you to watch me first because I want you to see that we're gonna leave some space between each shoot or between each rectangle. Every time you make a new line, you wanna get just a little bit more paint on your brush. So make sure you're leaving that little bit of space in between each shoot. 
Go ahead and start making your bamboo stalks now. And we're going to make three. Remember, only a little bit of paint. We're holding it in that first technique at the bottom of the handle. Dipping just the tip of your bristles into the paint. Lightly touching the paper, not pressing down. If you think your lines are too thick, lift your hand up just a little bit and try using less paint. And your stalks do not have to be the same size. They can be different sizes if you'd like. It's okay if some of your stalks are bigger or smaller, your lines are a little thicker. Remember, there's no such thing as mistakes, only happy accidents. This is your little world, so you can make it look however you'd like. Don't forget to leave some space for the two other stalks that we will be creating. Take your time, have fun, and just try your best. Remember, I like to hold the back of the handle between my ring finger and my pinky so I have good control over the paintbrush. Every time you make a new line, make sure you're grabbing a little bit more paint. Make sure you're not using any water or only using paint right now. Make sure you're leaving that space between each shoot. I'm making my shoots a little bit larger, just so you can easily see what I'm doing, but yours can be bigger or smaller. And you don't have to go all the way up to the top of the paper, but if you want to, you can. You can make your painting look however you'd like. Make sure you're getting a little bit more paint every time you make a new line. We're just lightly touching the paper with the tip of your bristles. Making three different stocks. Make sure you're leaving space between each of the shoots. Just a little bit because we want to express each part of this plant. Remember, if you think your lines are coming out too big, just lift your hand up a little and try using less paint. You don't have to have as many shoots as I do. You can have more or less. Now we're going to paint the branches. We're still holding our paintbrush at the bottom of the handle, just between your index finger and your thumb. We're gonna dip the tip of the bristles into the paint. Make sure you watch me first. We're gonna start the branches from the spaces in between each shoot. So we're gonna make these really thin lines for the branches like we were practicing earlier. And make sure you leave some space between each part of the branch as well. 
every time you make a new line, make sure you're getting a little bit more paint. Go ahead and start making your branches now, making sure you're holding your brush at the bottom of the handle, right? We're not holding it like a pen or a pencil. We're holding it in the palm of our hand between your index finger, your thumb, and making sure you're holding it right at the bottom of the handle just before you touch the bristles. Dipping only the very tip of your bristles into the paint. You don't need too much. You might be wondering, what about the other side of the chute? We will be painting on that side as well. Remember, you don't have to fill up the whole paper. It's okay if there's some white space. That's okay. Make as many branches as you'd like. They can look however you'd like, be as long as you'd like them to be as well. Making sure you're only using a little bit of paint on just the tip of your bristles. We're only lightly touching the paper. Make sure we're not pressing down and that our lines are very thin. Every time we're making a new line, we're gonna get a little bit more paint. You can make as many branches as you'd like. Remember, they don't have to look like mine. You can make them look however you'd like. start making our leaves. For the leaves, we want to make sure we're holding the paintbrush like a pen or a pencil. So we're going back to that second technique. In the middle of the handle, like a pen or a pencil, we're going to dip the tip of the bristles in the paint and then lightly wipe off any extra paint on the edge of the container. Right? Remember, I like to twist the handle between my fingers to make sure I get all the paint off of all the sides of the bristles. I wanna make sure that the bristles come to a nice point. Find one of the ends of your branches, touch the paper with the tip of your bristles. We're gonna press down, flick, press down, flick, press down, flick. Making sure you make about three leaves in each set before you get a little bit more paint. Remember, you're just brushing the brush on the paper. Go ahead and get started now on your own. I'll go over that technique once again. Remember we're holding it in the middle of the handle, lightly getting a little bit of paint, and wiping off any excess paint that we have. We wanna get all that paint off of all the edges. We're gonna lightly touch the paper with the tip of the bristles, press down, flick, press down, flick, press down, flick. And your leaves can be going in any direction that you'd like. Most important part about this step is to make sure you're wiping off that extra paint. You need to make as many leaves as you'd like. We're gonna use start the leaves at the very end of each branch. Make sure it comes to that nice point. And we're sweeping the paper with our bristles, just sweeping the bristles along. Mm -hmm. 
Remember, you don't have to have as many leaves as I do. You can also have more or less. It's okay. Remember, we're gonna touch the paper with the tip of the bristles. We're gonna press down, flick, press down, flick, press down, flick. We're, we're like brushing the brush on the paper. So I look, use this like flicking motion with my wrist. And we have one more step after this. Okay. So now we're gonna put the paint over to the side and now we're gonna use a little bit of water. I like to put a little bit of water in my lid, that little circular part at the top there. If you're using a cup, fill it up just a little bit. Don't need too much water, just cover the very bottom of the cup. No more paint because we already have paint on our bristles. So still holding the paintbrush like a pen or a pencil in the middle of the handle. You're gonna dip your paintbrush in the water and I like to make sure I get all sides of the bristles and make sure I get uh, covered in water. We're gonna paint the inside of each shoot. So all your painting is about half of each shoot with little triangles. I like to grab a little bit more water every time I paint a new shoot. Making sure you're getting water on all sides of the bristles and we don't need paint because we have paint on the bristles still. And that's just going to lighten the paint enough so we can give it some shading. Adding some shadows on the bamboo. Only painting half of each rectangle for each shoot. You don't need to paint all of it. And like holding the paintbrush on the side. And we don't want to put your pit bristles too much into the water. We just need a little bit of water to lighten that paint that's already on the bristles. And this is the last step of our painting. using just a little bit of water. You don't need too much. Painting little triangles inside each shoot so we can give the bamboo a little bit of shading. Kind of like water coloring because you lighten the, the paint just a little by adding some water. that is the end of our painting. I hope that you enjoyed painting some bamboo just like hokusai by using the Asian brush stroke technique. Make sure you sign your work and I look forward to our next lesson together. Thanks for joining. Have a great rest of your day.